my first acting job, I did a short film, and it was we were dressed up in like the 1920s because that was, was like a period. Piece. Yeah, and and I, this is so insane what I did, so insane. I was acting fast, like like black and white movies were sped up. Wait, so you were like Charlie Chaplining it? I, like, was, blah, 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 blah. I was like acting like I was in a Charlie Chaplin movie. Why were you doing that? I don't know. <laughs> Wait, but what was it called for? <laughs> what do you mean? Not at all. Not at all. Did it, yeah, did it say It, it was in 19, that. like, it was supposed to be like the 1900s. So you and thought they, thought they were. But we're thought, not shooting it in the 1900s, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, like yeah, do you like think, do you think absolute that, brain. What was your fall? process in this? <laughs> <laughs> all I know is they stopped and they were like, hey, whoa, whoa, what whoa, are you doing? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> it's really interesting. Let's slow it down. Yeah. <laughs> like, she was like, what are you doing? You're like, because this the film is faster back then. <laughs> yeah. So it would look like I'm going really fast what now. Is that? <laughs> you said, that's what said. If you haven't ever seen a film from the 1920s yeah. before. Guys, we're here with James Morrissini. He is a uh, an indie film darling. Brandon's here. Mitch is on the ones and twos. Welcome to the show. James, thank you so much for coming. I saw you at a party. And, um, and you know, when you go to parties, it's so funny because, like, I have Naveen with me. And you, you got to get guests for the podcast. And it is the worst question to ask. I liked it. I liked when you asked me. Well, so so we saw you. The thing is, is... He made a movie called I Love You, Dad. Mm -hmm. Like I love my dad. Yeah. I love my dad. Mm -hmm. We saw it, I don't know, maybe it's like the, one of the first movies Naveen and I saw together as we were a couple, as a couple. It's such a good movie. You wrote, you directed it. It won the Sundance mm -hmm. Jury Award. And the South by. What's that? So, uh, South by. South Sorry. By. South, South it by. It won the South by Grand Jury and Audience Award. And what's the difference between the Grand Jury and the Audience? So Grand Jury, there are like five people that decide upon their favorite movie. That's just five. I think it's like five to ten. Who are the I five? I don't know. I guess they're very smart, special people. Wow. Uh, but and they and they love me now. Um, Amazing. <laughs> yeah, <I don't> know. <laughs> and then the audience is like all of the everybody in the audience votes. Ah, online. The, yeah. And then the five. Uh, that's the jury. I yeah, wonder yeah. who's on the five. Like, is it? Do you know? I I I think I know one of them. I don't know. It's like Arnold know. Schwarzenegger. Tyler Perry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tyler yeah. Perry. Yeah, Roland the Emmerich. Shadow Council. <laughs> the what? The Shadow Council. <laughs> the Shadow Council. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what they are. Um, They're the Shadow Council. <laughs> um, and so, so anyways, Brandon, this movie is like... It's, I saw it. Oh, you saw I it? I watched it last night. Oh, you watched it? Brandon yeah. Pratt! Yeah, I Whoa! watched it last night. I, I was told we were going to have a filmmaker here, and uh, I, this, uh, to my knowledge, this is your first feature? It's my... Third. Third, okay. Yeah, but it's my first with a proper budget and whatnot. The right. first two I made for like 10 to 15 grand each. Right, yeah. And yeah. those were like full features? Those or were, were the... full features, Okay, yeah. so with this one, my main question is like, how did all this come together? How did all that... Like, where... Because I was reading, I read that this yeah. idea of yours, this, this whole idea for the movie, which is basically, um, don't want to butcher it or anything, but it's like a dad who wants to get in contact with his son. Yeah. Um, his son doesn't want anything to do with him. Uh, the dad then kind of creates a profile yeah. of a real person that exists, yeah. but he pretends to be this person in order to talk to his son. It's a girl. It's Cat a very pretty girl. Yeah. Catfish is his yeah. own and son. And, it's Pat, and the dad is Patton Oswalt, who's ama yeah. amazing in it. Yeah. So that idea, I was I was researching that that is what happened to you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that so, actually happened yeah, to you. Yeah, so basically a long time ago, my dad and I, we got in a big fight, yeah. and... I blocked him on social media <laughs> and I was really depressed at the time and he was worried about me. And I got home one day and this really pretty girl had sent me a friend request <laughs> online. I, I was thrilled. I was yeah. like, this girl looks amazing. Yeah, right. Uh, and then, uh, and I, I, she had all these amazing pictures and all the same interests as me and everything. And then I, I found out that it was my dad. And, <laughs> How did and you he, find that and out? And he had, he, the email address that he used was the same email address that he has. 
Uh, he almost which, got it, right? Yeah, yeah he, which he was, was like almost there. It was the Cure one at RCN.com. <laughs> and I Big was alternative like, rock fan. Yeah, 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 I was like, man, that's so cool. Uh, she, and my dad, are gonna get along so well. This is <laughs> this is great. She likes the Cure. My dad likes the cure. the cure. And yeah. then I remember this feeling of just like absolute dread washing over my body, and then it was followed by kind of this weird elation of like, this is such a good bit. Like, I can't wait to share this with people. Yeah. But this also this kind of frustration of like, I don't know how I'm ever going to convey the weirdness of this. Yeah. That it's like such a sweet thing for him to do to make sure I'm okay. You no, know, it comes through in the movie. Like, you know, that that's why you really love Patton's character. Cause you're just like, Oh, he's, he's trying. I know. Can't, like thinking about it. who was going to play that part was tricky. He mm. was very in mind from the beginning, but like if it's the wrong casting, you end up just hating him. Yes. You know, you're like, this guy's just a jerk. Totally. Why is he, why is he doing this? Yeah. Well, I'm a dad, so I can, I I related to that. You really, I felt like you could have cast anyone because at the root of it, Mm. it's like, he wants a relationship with his son. Totally. I've had issues with my dad, you know, wanted to be closer with my dad. So I related to it, and uh, and then Lil, Lil Ro Harry is in it. Yeah, right? Lil Ro, mm-hmm. unreal. He's great in it. So funny. He's a trip. I mean, you can kind of just put a camera on him and let him riff, and he'll do. He'll just be hilarious. Right. He's funny in it. And every Rachel scene. Dratch, she's great in it. Great. Too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then, so how did you make? So when you make a movie for ten thousand dollars, is that all favors? So yeah, the f- the first movie I ever made was called Three Something. Yeah. It was about two friends that try to have a threesome, and then they both get way over invested mm-hmm. in the girl, and so they're like, they they both feel kind of emasculated that they're left out in different ways. <laughs> right. And funny. so then they're like trying to assert their masculinity and yeah. are, are having this crisis. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much all favors that we made it for no money. And then how much time are you asking of somebody? to come like is well it so like my buddy and i we decided that we were gonna cut we were gonna work on the story together and that i was gonna direct it and edit it and that we were gonna star in it together and we didn't really have a script i uh we just kind of like would improvise yep see like scenarios with like a vague structure mm. of the story and then when something happened that was interesting or that we wanted to follow, we would then like adjust our whole schedule to just like follow these random tangents. Wow. So we had like a DP uh, that was, that had a really nice camera. Yeah. Uh, our friend Ben. And then we bought sound equipment mm. and I would just like run labs to people. And then so you were sound. I was running sound <laughs> yeah. and acting in it and directing it. And then we just would amazing. I, you can act and hold the boom. Yeah, at the same time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know how you did it. Yeah. And then I, we, I would cut it together every night and then I would be like, all right, today we're going to follow this. So it was just really a matter of like my buddy, Sam and I and our friend Isabel all being on board with just like following the story wherever it went. Yeah. Um, we did that with my, my first movie. I made a movie called Jason Nash is married and it was, it was like 10 webisodes that all had, mm. that all had funny, you know, each one had a funny joke in them. And then when we finished the the editor was like, I can cut this into a movie. And I was like, I don't know, dog. <laughs> and, um, and he did it. He did it. It's 80 minutes. But it's like you know, yeah, yeah. I, I, I like it. It's pretty, it's pretty good. And um, and we had a lot of great people in it. We had like Rob Corddry and Busy Phillips and oh, Andy cool. Richter and T.J. Miller was in it. Oh, nice. Matt Walsh. Um, but I guess it, it can be done, huh? You can you can work backwards and and yeah. craft something with editing. Yeah, I think if yeah. the crew is small enough, James, just go a little bit up. I just oh, want to yeah. make sure we I, get I you. Think, oh, I think I think if the the crew is small enough, it's very doable. I mean, yeah, yeah. And, and like if everybody's on board. You can do it. Our second movie, like, kind of fell apart because we were like, "Tell us." We were like, "This is easy. We can do this." <laughs> you thought you were, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah we're yeah, like, yeah. we can just make. I was like, we can just make another movie the yeah. same way. So yeah. we had a way larger cast, and it was just way harder to like explore and direct without a script, mm-hmm. without people that were fully bought in. Some of us were. And then there were a couple people in the cast that were like, dude, what are we doing? Like this, Yeah, I hate this. Well, yeah, because it's like you're dealing with like schedules, you're dealing yeah. with a bu- bunch of different personalities, and, and it's like, yeah, that that kind of uh, renegade style filmmaking, they're just like, wait, what? where's my, do I have a trailer? Do I, what, what do we yeah, have? Yeah, definitely like, not. Yeah, definitely not. And But like, I think that's kind of cool, like writing through editing, 
like yeah, totally. the whole thing coming together in editing. Like you almost kind of have a vague idea going into the That's filming right. and and then it kind of comes. And so is that how you did the second one as well? You did that. So kind of- for the in between three something and I love my dad, we made a movie called more hmm. and we like tried to do it the same way, but there were so many more moving parts and it was actually like slightly bit. It was a bigger movie budgetarily. Like uh-huh. we had gone to everyone we know uh, to put money together. And it just, there was one actor that was like, I don't really want to do this anymore. And it was kind of in the middle of us figuring out how we were going to tell the story. Right. And so then all of a sudden we didn't have an actor that was like a central part of the story available to us as we kind of like went in and continued to build scenes. So we were like, we then had to figure out like a way for that to make sense. So this person who's like the one of the leads just like, it's like they left right <laughs> you know yeah. like oh that was so weird out they just left <laughs> and we we're like hey can we get a scene of you leaving and they're like nah and we how just, did you explain it in the movie well we didn't really it didn't work <laughs> it, it was terrible i mean we, okay. we we were then like all right this is a web series and then we cut it as a web series and i remember Easy. watching it with my buddy sam and we're just sitting in my apartment and we're like Dude, this is terrible. <laughs> this is like this is not gonna work. Yeah. So what's the worst feeling as a filmmaker oh, when you're brutal. watching something that you put a bunch of time into and you're like, "This is yeah." Sh- <laughs> yeah. So it's like there's no point in yeah. releasing this. I, I really admire that you you know that you went through that. I I gave up on that. Someone once said that to me. They go, "I was trying to make a movie," and he said, uh, "He goes, well, making a movie is summoning the devil." Totally. Uh, and you're you're asking for. A million things to go wrong in yeah. a million different ways, and the fact that you hit lightning in the bottle with the first one, and expected that it would, and then you ran into trouble in the second one. But then on the third one, it seems like you yeah, got yeah. So then, then I like you know I, I had been editing that second one for like a year and a half, and then I and then we we decided we were just going to cut our losses. My friend left the business; he moved to New York. <laughs> wow. Mm. Because it, it was just, it was super disappointing. Yes, <laughs> it was that bad. It was rough, dude. It was that we, bad. we had asked everyone we know for money on this. It wasn't a lot of money, but still, like, to to fail in that way for the second one. For the second what one, what was, was the budget of the second? It was one? like it wasn't a ton. It was still like probably like twenty five grand. Oh, okay. But it was like a lot of like five hundred here, a thousand here. Didn't right. It? Yeah. Um, and then I spent the next few years like really just like spending tons of time screenwriting and getting and getting better and better and better at that. And then I wrote, I love my dad Yeah, and got that. Cause I was, I, I realized like, I want to have the story really, really locked in yep. and be excited to share the plan with everybody. Yeah. And so then I over prepared for, I love my dad. I storyboarded the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it had gone through so many drafts. We rehearsed a ton. Mm. I was super on board with everyone in my crew. Like we, we, we were, we went in with a really solid plan. Talk to Brandon. Brandon has this thing where he's like, he wants to make a movie so badly, and he feels like he's a failure because he hasn't done it yet. I know Can you speak feeling. to him? You're a little bit. You're a little well, bit older than well, Brandon. Yeah, I'm 29. You're yeah. So go ahead because you're on the other side of this now. <laughs> yeah. So you go ahead. But Brandon's and tell a great me. writer. I mean, really good. He's written so many movies that no one's made or well, touched yet. Well, that's the thing that right? I've read. I've actually, I've actually curious your thoughts on this. When you're so, I love my dad. Was the first was that the first screenplay that you wrote? I had written like the actual screenplay, four or five others before that. Mm. That was the first one that I actually produced, though. Right. Okay. Yeah. And so those four or five other others, uh, did you run into a problem where you're writing and you're like, I'm gonna film this myself. Mm-hmm. This is gonna be independently made for no money. And then you're like, Oh, this this part needs to be in there. And then you're like, That's a fifty thousand dollar scene, or that requires this like effect or this actor or whatever. And then you go, okay, you know what? This is going to be something I'm going to put to the side, and then I'm going to make something smaller, right? Yep. And to make something, and then you you start writing that, and then you're like, oh, I'm going to do this, mm. and then you run into the same problem, mm. and then it's like, oh, okay, and then you go, what can I write that's economic mm-hmm. to film? Mm-hmm. Which kind of sounds like you did for the first two ones, and then for the for I love my dad, was that like you just knew that one was going to get made, or was that kind of like? Was that like you just happen to meet like Pat Patent? Yeah, Patent. Uh, yeah, for for that one, I just decided I believe in it enough that I'm gonna do everything in my power to get it made. Right. You got to be a bit of a a maniac. Yeah, you yeah, do. You really I, do. I was like, I don't 
care. Like I'm not going to hedge anymore. Yeah. I put my acting career to the side. I put everything to the side and I was just like, this is what's going to happen. Mm. Um, and it's a tricky thing. I mean, you're, you have to get people to invest millions of their dollars <laughs> into, into an account it's crazy, so that you can then like tell this story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? and, and it's this weird balancing act of like talent knowing like, like actors knowing that the project is real, mm-hmm. but then people that have money knowing that there are actors attached. So it's this like trying to get people on board kind of at the, yeah. s- at the same time. Yeah, cause it's like, you can't, it's cause I've heard this too. It's like, cause I've tried to get features made too. And they're like, well, who do you have attached? And I'm like, well, no one. And they're like, well, then how are you going to get the money? And I'm like, I don't know. But then you go to an actor, you're like, Hey, I want to get yeah. this big actor. And they're like, well, where's the money? Yeah, exactly. And I go, well, I don't, I need you involved to get the money. And then they go, and then it's like, but so you can't, it's like such a weird alchemy I know, to have it all crazy get catch made. 22. Yeah. It hit a point where I was like, I- I'm going to make this for a hundred grand myself. Right. Uh, unless we can put the money together. And then when people realized that I was serious about that, then everyone started working way, like everyone really dove in to, to trying to make it happen. If you can get that one person too, you, the others follow in, totally. right? Like if yeah. you get Patton, then little little Rel goes, Oh, okay. Yeah. This is real. Exactly. Right. Is yeah. That how it I, happened? The script won a screenwriting competition. Oh, great. Over like 2,300 others. This, wow. This, mm. this contest screen craft. <laughs> uh, and so someone, uh, I was friends with Patton's manager and he had seen that it won and he's like, do you, do you think it'd be right for Patton? And I, I had wanted Patton to do it. Mm. Uh, oh, and so then he sent it to Patton. Patton and I met. Patton was like, cool, this, yeah, I really want to do this. Mm-hmm. And then we were able to like put the production strategy together and then we went out to our inve- we went out to a few investors and someone got really on board with it. Right. Sorry, um, I'm just gonna take notes really quick yeah, as you yeah. talk. Just give me a second. Just yeah. keep talking. Yeah, yeah. That's that's <laughs> the whole thing, man. Yeah. No. I mean, yeah. so yeah, that's kind of so patent sought bef- like even before James you reached out to him. didn't know this was gonna be like a tutelage. <laughs> no, I love it. He I, came to promote. I, I know. James has a new movie that was just at Sundance. Yep. Right. And it uh, and it just sold yeah to Netflix it sold to Netflix uh, the oh, highest wow. the highest bid at the show right seventeen yeah. mil yeah 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 it was really oh wow a horror movie brand a horror yeah, movie it's like a sci fi fantasy horror movie just, but you're uh, just you're an actor in it right I'm an actor in it yeah. that's kind of nice it was so fun yeah, yeah. do you yeah. write it as well no 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 oh, okay I, I, I'm an actor in it um it, it was great man I'm really excited for people to see it it's it's pretty extraordinary. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. What's the plot? I they they are like so insistent upon me oh, not sharing the plot. Gotcha. It's, oh. and, which is frustrating. Mm. <laughs> it's like a Cloverfield kind <laughs> of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't I don't really know how to talk about it. <laughs> maybe that maybe I, that's good. Maybe people are watching they're like, I gotta fucking see this yeah, movie. Why like, can't yeah. he talk about it? I know, yeah. I know. What is it about? I, it's impossible to like get people excited about it because you're like, I can't say anything. It's interesting. But yeah. So, so uh, is that you're only acting in that one? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you're really stressing that. <laughs> no, no, no. no. I'm, I'm not saying only, but you know what I mean. Like, you're, 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 so you don't do because anything you, because you did all three <laughs> yeah, yeah, in the yeah, last yeah. one. So you know, you're, no, you're also I say an the same thing, and then I'm like, why am I saying it that way? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It feels like demeaning, but it's like, I know, no, you're I know. in a seventeen million dollar movie. <laughs> yeah. But which do you find to be more like a fulfilling thing? Would it be the writing, the directing, or the acting? Yeah, it's and it, it's so hard to answer, man. It's like because I, I it it just kind of depends on the project and like who I'm working with, and I really like doing all of it, just because it's it feels kind of like an extreme sport because it's so hard to do to be like acting and then managing uh, you know hundreds of people on a crew and like being uh mindful of your time on that you're taking with each scene but also being emotionally accessible and paying attention to the other actor so it's like it's so you're like playing chess and then also having to be available emotionally and it's like it's so focusing and intense that it's it gets you it, it you just have to be so present mm. yeah and so you're using like your logical mind and your creative mind. Dude, at the it's same impossible time. to to direct and act. I would never, ever, ever try to do it. When, when when Brandon and I made a movie together, and I was the director, but honestly, I couldn't be. I couldn't direct. I, they would. I would walk up the thing. I'd be reading my sides, and the DP would go, 
what do you think of this? And I'd go, okay. Yeah. You know, I <laughs> yeah. mean, like, it's, not, I, 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 it's impossible. I could not do it. Yeah, we, mm. we, we storyboarded the whole, most of the movie. Yeah. So I would, like, walk my crew through how it was going to look in the movie and what it was going to sound like and what it was going to feel like. So we, I knew every shot. Mm. Uh, so it was a matter of just, like, we were we interpreted it pretty literally. Yeah. We were just like, all right, we got to get this, then this, then this. And uh, so everyone knew <clears throat> what we were trying to do. I wasn't, if I wasn't acting in it, I would have been more flexible with that, that plan. And yeah. I would have been like, oh, what if we change it all and just follow this or get it in a one Yeah. But, but, uh, but because I was acting in it, I had to do all that legwork ahead of time so that I wasn't having to be as, um, kind of hyper focused on the shots we were going to get and whatnot. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And like when you're when you're in it and when you're acting, do you ever go am I doing a good enough job as this as <laughs> oh, the yeah. acting? Cuz oh, you know, yeah. like am I am I f-? because I have the same thing. I've uh written and directed and star uh, and acted in a lot of short films. And a lot I you've have, made 30, right? I've made like Whoa. 15. 15. But, but so I when I'm doing that my thing is I always like to write because if I know that I'm going to be the guy yeah. in it, I always like to give myself little dialogue and the character I'm acting alongside way more dialogue mm. just to make it so all I have to do is just react accordingly and just not f- them up. Oh, that's if cool. If I don't f- them up, then I'm good. I mean, it's gonna, it would be a, it would almost be an achievement to f- up the scene with how little dialogue I've given myself. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So this is like one of those Hollywood reporter round tables. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when they sit there and yeah, yeah. kind of the actors ruminate yeah. about the character. We just kind of sit there. Yeah. And like, <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm I saw making, you in one this morning. I know, I'm doing that. <laughs> it's, it, I mean, how else do you promote a movie no, and get people know. excited about I mean, it? I but can't... they are, they are very like haughty and like, know, yeah, there's, yeah, a right. pro- there was there's one, a pretension to them. My yeah, process. Totally. <laughs> rough, dude. But then how else do you promote it? I mean, I kind of want to just start being like, I don't know, man. (laughs) Did you see Nathan Fielder on um, Kimmel? Yeah, yeah. So So funny. Can you call it up? Brandon, you got to see it. I've seen that. You see it when when he went with Emma Stone? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you guys have seen it? Yeah, I've already seen it. It's so good. You know what's funny about it? The jacket that he chose. (laughs) Have you seen The Curse? The show is so good. Is it? It's my favorite show. So good. The best show. It's my favorite show We watched the whole thing. Look at the jacket. The jacket is like, look at that. Oh, that's great. I like how he's just not smiling. Yeah. Such an actor. It's like a duster, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's he, a um, trench coat. we met him the other night and, uh, so nice. And again, yeah. getting back to yeah. that, that question can you do my podcast? The worst. <laughs> yeah. The fucking worst. I go, you know, how did that you, question go? How, what happened? So, you asked Nathan Fielder to be on the podcast? Yeah. That was, oh. I got to, man. I got to yeah, fucking yeah. I get, get it, people here. What did you, what, what did he say? So we went to some we went to some food event. Okay. And there's actually like a lot of celebrities there, whatever. And it was fun. It was like me and Joe, whatever. So then because we had been watching the and Naveen, my wife, she's always pushing me. She's like, go ask. That's how we got you. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. That's how you're here, cousin Naveen. And cause I remember I saw you and I was like, Oh my God, you're from the, f- I was talking to him for a while and yeah. I was like, yeah. I f- know this dude. Yeah. I was having the same experience cause we had met like six we or had seven years, years ago on a photo I, shoot. I was like, how do I, yeah. and out of, when you're out of a context, you're like, wait, I know this person. Yeah. 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 And so I'm looking at him and then I'm like, after talking to him for five minutes, I was like, that fucking movie with yeah. Patton Oswalt, blah, 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 blah. So then, of course, Naveen is like, yeah, you ask him to do the podcast, ask him. And I was like, oh, you want to do my podcast? <laughs> So you said yes, which is very nice of you. And so the, we were at the other thing, and we had been watching The Curse, and we were like so fired up about it. We saw Nathan Fielder. The Curse is great. You should mm, watch it. Yeah. And and then so then Naveen's like, go over and talk to him. Go say something. And luckily, it went very well because we were so new to The Curse. When we said The Curse, he was like, Oh, someone's seen this show. Yeah, yeah. That oh, I think cool. that obviously he thinks is good. Yeah. yeah. Which it's it's so good. It's mm-hmm. brilliant. So so we were like, oh, and then this and that, and then this happens. He goes, Wow, you guys are caught up. Yeah. Like that. He was super nice. And then and then Naveen's like, That's cool, man. That's cool. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, uh, I'm like, I'm like, hey man, yeah, I'm like, you don't ever do podcasts, do you? <laughs> <laughs> like that. And he goes, uh, he's really chill. He was just like, mm, podcast? No. And he was like, he's like, I don't really like to talk about myself. Yeah, and then I think I said, I said, well, you can come and uh, you can interview me. 
I think that's what I said. Oh. And, uh, and he was just like, <laughs> uh, uh, have you ever auditioned for a Marvel film? I think I have. Yeah. yeah. Are those, are those nerve wracking? Is that an intense kind of thing? Like a big deal? Kind of, yeah, but in the back of your head, you're just like, they're not, this is not going anywhere. I don't know. That's I, not true, dude. No, I know. That's I, not true. My friend you, you, just got in a Marvel movie, and he hear, did. hearing about it just sounded like the most harrowing experience. Really? Just having, like, them flying him out. He's got to, like, they had to, he had to wear, like, a fake suit, and, like, there's so much pressure on just the test a- around it. Yeah, it's just, oh, sounded, so he, and you know how much money you're going to make. And stuff yes, before yes. you do it. So he had to go test for it or he booked it? He he tested for it and then he booked it. Yeah. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah. Can you make yeah. this clip one minute long? <laughs> so we can have it for TikTok? <laughs> you keep talking about Marvel for one minute. Yeah. Do you, Marvel, Marvel. <laughs> superheroes. Who's your favorite you know? superhero, man? Yeah, you know, I, I love all the superheroes. <laughs> right. I mean Daredevil it, guy, big Daredevil. Daredevil's great. I love him. You know? How many Marvel movies have you seen? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I went down the rabbit hole during the pandemic and I tried watching them in sequence. Mm. And I, 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 I had a hard time doing that. Yeah. How many are there now? 30 something? There's like 30, yeah. 30 something? Jason only watches Marvel movies, so that's why he's asking. The ones that Shane Black directed are incredible. Yeah, Iron They're, Man 3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and I mean, Shane, no, Shane Black was in a short film that I directed. Really? Acting. That's Brandon's he, one Hollywood friend. No, that's that's not, that's <laughs> the, Black. that's the one that that's I'm one like, guy. this is super cool. Yeah. Like, this is super, like... He's an actual, like, he's a, the nice guys I yeah. love to death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he just decided to act in my short or Whoa. whatever. That was what? so catty of me. What? What? Yeah, it was. Like, oh, his one was, Hollywood like, friend. I'm like, hey, I man. You would, I thought you would laugh. No, I mean, I'm just like, he's a really, he just, I'm really I'm sure he's, 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 he's talking just about hurt. his film. Yeah, I, I You're just like, him. that's kind of mean. That's, <laughs> <laughs> You're like, All it's right, one right. of those moments when someone says something so mean that you just, if you acknowledge it, it makes it worse. Yeah, you know? no, I was just like, <laughs> yeah, so anyways. Yeah, so, uh, anyway. <laughs> so my short film, uh, yeah, this guy kiss, acted Kiss, bang, bang. It was great. I really loved it a lot. You're like, anyway, so he's great my short film. <laughs> That's literally what I was about yeah, to say. Yeah. He's a great actor, and he yeah. was great in my short. So, I don't yeah. know, so, dude, you have value. You're loved. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> thanks, man. I yeah, appreciate dude. that. Yeah, he's a real bully, dude. Yeah, I know. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> That's no, what dude. you need. You, you, you need to do what James did. You got to get that. He's, gonna, he's doing you. great. Yeah, dude. Yeah, that, but what he said, remember, and he was like, I'm doing this no matter what. When did you turn into my father on the podcast? You're like, you have to listen to James. What because you call me like all the time. It's, it's like, James, he I, calls way, me all the time. I don't he's call like, you all the time. Do you know where I can get you, $1. I, $1. $1. $1. million? I don't call him all the time. He's totally lying. You do about, call me totally about your script, lying and about I love it. Yeah, no, you, I've asked but you we about do, How many conversations have we had about your movie career uh, Hold years? on a second, James. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, we have James, this lot. usually doesn't happen have, to me. You guys I are ha- thrown down. <laughs> what are you saying? We talk about it all the time. Well, we talk about it, but I, I And do, I love it. Yeah, but I go like, I just don't know where to get money. I mean, that's the big thing, right? You just don't know where to get the money. Yeah. Usually, that's the problem. Yeah. And I mean, it seems like you kind of solve that problem by, I mean, can, can I ask a question? I don't know yeah. if this is too in-depth, but how much did this... New one costs like the one that with a patent in it. The uh, I love my dad. Yeah, uh, it, it costs like millions of dollars. I mean, it costs a yeah. lot. Yeah, I mean, it's it's still a hard. It's hard to do. It's yeah. it's and it's always a question of like how to get the right person to partner with you to make it. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're taking a lot of risk. Uh, you know, it's 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 a it's horrible and fun at the same time because it's hard to find somebody mm-hmm. and then once you f- but once you find somebody it's fun because you're partnering you're both taking a risk you're putting yourself out there creatively and they're putting a lot of their money into the do you feel the bad thing. if the movie doesn't make its money back yeah yeah 100 <laughs> percent. i mean because i felt bad yeah i felt real bad oh, i remember that call <laughs> It's r- and I mean, we didn't even spend a uh, million dollars, and I felt bad. Yeah, my, my yeah. movie they came out. It uh, it sold six copies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> six. <laughs> Is this before like streaming too? So like you, this was an iTunes thing, right? It was yes. like on iTunes. Yes. So people had to buy the movie because I, yours is on Hulu right now, right? It's on Hulu, That's how, yeah. where I watched it. Um, is the Hulu check enough to pay for the movie? Hard, uh, hard to say. I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Because that's what I always wonder about. Most films yeah. are in the red. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Ours did re- ours did really well. Yours did really well. Yeah. And yeah. you get that money from streaming, basically. Not from ticket sales. Uh, well, ours had a limited theatrical run. Oh, it and, did? Yeah. And then, and then it was most of its audience is from Hulu. Got it. Yeah. And then, and then um, is there other ways to make money on a film? Like, 
uh, would 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 someone in France call you and get the international rights to that movie? Yeah, and you can make money that way yeah, too. So Did Mag- that happen? Magnolia has like an international distribution yeah. arm, and then mm-hmm. it's selling territories off. Yes, so it'll like sell to France for yeah, however right. much money, and then so it'll. And then they just own. It's like a, a, a distributor that then live that, that that's then based in that country. Yep. That has total ownership of it. Amazing. And, remember, go ahead, Brent. Well, uh, my question was for these streaming services. Yeah. Do they tell you like analytically like what like how many people saw your movie? Because that's always something I've wondered. Is like some not, not Netflix really, doesn't no. really do they, that. I think that information they like to keep. Super close to the chest. So you don't know how many people have seen have, your movie. I have no idea. There is the the statistic I use, I guess, is on Letterboxd. Yeah. You can see how many people reviewed it. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And 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 how many people have watched it. And so I, I think like, all right, one in every three hundred people or one in every five hundred people probably have Letterboxd. So mm-hmm. then I just like think, all right. However many thousands yeah. multiplied by five hundred or whatever, then I'm like, oh, yeah. I have a I have a decent sense of of how many people. Oh, why can't they just tell you? That's so interesting. I don't know. I think it's it's a good question. I feel like you would have the right to know that as the filmmaker. I know we should call them. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's kind of right nice now. that he doesn't know, right? Yeah, because he doesn't why? have to. He doesn't have to live in that space. Yeah, yeah, wh- which we live in. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we do we do the internet, so we see the numbers every day. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, Fox I mean, I, I kind of just like I, isn't happening. Yeah. I make it, and then I just go here. It is, and then yeah. I, yeah. I'm like, that's kind of nice. I move on to the next. Thing. Did you make? How do I ask this delicately? <laughs> have you made any money doing this job? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah, have. Yeah, you're well, doing okay. Yeah, I'm, I make a great. Oh, great! I make. Oh. I'm extremely. <laughs> so you you can. Yeah, you dude. Can. I mean, I, I I mean, when I first graduated theater slash film school, I. Waited tables and bartended and so you made some money there. And I made, yeah, made some incredible. <laughs> That's the and money then I started ma- and then it like the acting was, you know, I was able to make a living there. And yep. then the filmmaking supported that. And yep. yeah, good, 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 good. So you've made a lot of money. Have you thought about investing <laughs> that maybe into another film? <laughs> Possibly, you know, like maybe be a producer on something. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah. I'll give you my card after yeah, the podcast. You don't, you don't have, have a card. <laughs> no, I don't have a card. <laughs> <laughs> it's just crayon on a have piece. Have you ever of had a card paper. before? <laughs> I did. I, have a, I had a card for a while. It was real cringe. <laughs> oh, I, like a card, like a Patrick oh, Bateman man. kind of card. When I was, yeah, when I was like, when I was just starting out as an actor, I had a card that had a headshot on it. Ooh. That was rough. <laughs> like, it makes me sweat just thinking Ooh. about it. It was so tough. What's wrong with that? It's just it's pre-internet. Just, it's just like kind of thirsty. Like, I, I remember yeah. passing it out and then someone like, took a picture of it and they were like kind of making fun because my headshot mm-hmm. was like real serious in it and I just felt like oh man I felt so embarrassed <laughs> it was just rough man I mean you got to do what you got to do yeah, yeah, yeah you know I had a friend the other day who was going to a, a meeting with an agent yeah and she was like should I bring a headshot I was like I don't think so oh, no because that's like they're looking at you yeah yeah <laughs> you know what I mean it's like how does this in this modern age uh, how, with because you're an actor also, mm-hmm. with auditioning, is it all online or do you do anything in person anymore? It's kind of a mix. I'll, I'll sometimes go and meet with directors yeah. in person. We'll just like get a coffee and talk. Uh, other than that, I think it's it's tapes and stuff, yeah. which I'll do if I'm really gunning for a, a particular project. Have you ever had a casting director walk out in the middle of your audition? Because <laughs> I have. Really? Yeah. What happened? I don't know, man. I Why to- did they do that? Did you that wasn't fart? any good. <laughs> but they walked out. They in the left the room. She left in the middle. But what? How did? What did they say? I think she got a call or something. She didn't oh, say you were in the middle of it. There. It's like a dramatic scene. And uh, she just walked out, and the tape's still going. And I'm like, Was, did she come back? Yeah, she came back. Wait, remember, did she explain what happened? No, she didn't say anything. No, I when I was acting, I was like so fearful that I would have known. So scared. If I did it now, I'd be like, what the. F- but back then, sure. I was just like, I needed a job so badly. That's the other th- part about being an actor is like, you know, you need that. You need the job. You need the job. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I remember the first audition I ever had. I was pretty young. It was for an Emerson student film. Yeah. And I was um, I was trying to be dramatic. Yeah. Mm. So, And I was also really nervous. And so I was starting the scene by going... <sighs> And I did that, and then they were like, "It's okay, honey, you're doing great." And that, but I was like making a choice to do that, 
in the scene. Yes. And then I got into a space where I was then explaining that to them. <laughs> where I was going, no, 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 I'm not nervous. I'm doing that because I'm the character. And they were like, all right, man. What, <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, right, I'm yeah. very good right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're the great. weird one. Yeah. Why are you comforting me? Yeah. Let me act. Yeah. The fact that you think I'm in despair means that I'm really <laughs> yeah. fucking good. Yeah, yeah. This is not me being nervous. Yeah. This is me being very good. So like, give me the role. Let me do it again. Yeah. And then I remember deliberately going, <laughs> again, <laughs> again, and just watching them like shift kind of uncomfortably. Like, yeah. I, I got you beat. I, 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 my first acting job, I did a short film and it was, we were dressed up in like the 1920s because that was, it was like a period piece. Yeah. And, and I, this is so insane what I did. So insane. I was acting fast, like, like black and white movies were sped up. Wait, so you were like Charlie Chaplining it? You're I like, was, bim, 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 bim. I was like acting like I was in a Charlie Chaplin movie. Why were you doing that? I don't know. <laughs> Wait, but what was it called for? <laughs> what do you mean? Not at all. Not at all. Did it? And yeah. Did it say? It, it was a nineteen. That. Like it was supposed to be like the nineteen hundreds. So you and thought might, they were, but we're thought, not shooting it in the nineteen hundreds, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, like yeah. Did you like, think? Do you think absolute that, brain? What was your fall? process in this? <laughs> <laughs> all I know is they stopped and they were like, "Hey, whoa, whoa, what whoa, are whoa, you doing? Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> it's really interesting." Let's slow it down. Yeah. <laughs> like, she was like, what are you doing? You're like, because this the film is faster back then. <laughs> yeah. So it would look like I'm going really fast what now. Is that? <laughs> you said, that's what if you haven't ever seen a film from the 1920s yeah. before. Was they're like, very fast. Was they're like, very fast. That's also why I'm, I'm not, going fast too that's now. That's also why so. I brought, uh, brought uh, cue cards to show what I'm actually <laughs> yeah. saying in the dialogue yeah, yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. I brought my own hand crank Bolex yeah. with me too. Like, I think it's cool, man. <laughs> oh, it was awful. I was I was young. Yeah. I man. was like 35. Damn. No, I know. I was like 21, but yeah, acting has just been a miserable uh every, everything with acting has been miserable for me. <laughs> Absolutely miserable. That's... Drake and Josh. Oh yeah, he was on they Drake kept and Josh. there all day. <laughs> you were in like one scene. I was in one scene and they They kept you there all day. Yeah, they threw like a, they threw a cake on somebody. And then the guy came out and he was like, I didn't like it. So they put this woman back. The guy in makeup. didn't like it that got the cake on him. <laughs> the director didn't like okay, whatever okay. he got. Um, but I, yeah, like the, it, I like the actor getting the cake thrown at him and he's like, I didn't like that. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> that didn't make me feel good. Uh, but you're a very successful actor. So uh, how has it been for you? Because it's been miserable for him. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I also mean, quit yeah, a long time quit, ago. Yeah. What else do you do besides make movies? Is your, That's all you do? I, no, I exercise. Yeah, keep in shape. An actor's got to be in shape, right? You that's gotta, true. You got to be. You can't just balloon out. I play out. a lot of chess. No, you don't. Yeah, I play a lot of chess. You any good? I'm pretty good. Yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where do you go? You you go down to the to the park and there's you a there's a ch it's the nerdiest the thing ever. There's a chess club every Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at in, in Frank uh, in Griffith Park. Yes, I go there sometimes and play. <laughs> Would you What's be your like? Rating? I don't really, I don't have a rating because I've never played professional. Like I've never gone to a tournament and then gotten rated. What does chess.com say your rating is? It says it's like 1250 or something. You're better than me. Okay. <laughs> do you. Okay. I'll go back to my hole. Yeah. <laughs> never mind. Do you, when you're uh, on set, do you like pull a Kubrick and just play chess between takes? I play takes? a lot of chess. Between takes? Sometimes, yeah. I, okay. It keeps me really. Sh it, it's like it's. Yeah. It makes me really focused and like not. It it gets me over any self consciousness. No Adderall, just chess. That's right. That's, that's the right. old. That's that's the old way of Adderall. That's yeah. What Adderall used to be. Was what chess. do you guys do other than this? Beat off. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's good. Uh, what do we do for fun? Yeah. What do we do for fun, Brand? It's a hard I mean, question. I, just, you know? I mean, yeah, well, chess I is a good I, answer. I kind of like out. for fun. I just like he, like he, sit around with my friends. Yeah, and me just, too. Like, talk about stuff. watch dumb movies. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I try to do the thing where I watch like a movie a day, just to like you watch a movie a day. I try to. That's great. Yeah, I mean, do you, you, yeah, you I try to. It, try yeah. to. It's yeah, it's hard yeah. sometimes because yeah. you're like ah fuck. Like last night, I watched all three before movies. So you watched trilogy. all three before movies, and I love my dad. Yeah. Whoa! That's yeah. all. So that was like eight hours of movies. <laughs> it was, dude. <laughs> that's well. Crazy. What happened was what happened was Someone I watched the before. I, I watched the before trilogy, and uh, and then I remembered you were coming on. I was like, oh, I need to 
I mean, I would love to see your movie. And so I was like, eh, it's an hour and a half. And I love that you made it an hour and a half. Thank you. Because every movie. Oh, now these movies, two and a half hours. What are they doing? Two and a half hours, man. It was like, I, I mean, as a filmmaker, like, what do you feel, feel about that? Like, just lengthy run times. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, sometimes I enjoy it. Um, sometimes it's like justified. You, yeah. You feel I like when Judd Apatow makes a long movie. Well, you love Judd Apatow. I know movies. a lot of people complain about the length of his movies. Yeah. But I like, I, I just love the world so much that I'm down and it's comedy and it's like, yeah. it's such a, it's such a high level of comedy that I'm like, oh, this is great. But sometimes you, like, but Oppenheimer, I ain't going. I love, but Oppenheimer, I felt used it so well because it's such a grand story. Yeah. yeah. And right. it's like, you kind of, I'm almost surprised they were able to fit in three hours. What about um, flowers? Children of the Flower Moon. Did you feel like that was long? too long? I, I you, loved it. I, yeah, it was great. I, I loved it too, but I, I also it, left. I saw it in a. <laughs> you left. <laughs> it was too. I thought it was too long. I saw How it, but I loved it. I plan on. I had to go get my daughter. Yeah, but I do plan on finishing it. I saw it in a theater, and I, I was just. I kind of just surrendered to it, and I was. Yeah. I was all in. I could have stayed for I, it yeah, the whole thing. Yeah. I, if, I, if I watched it at home, though, I think I probably would have been like on my phone, and then yeah, yeah. That's what with the Irishman. That was my experience was yeah, I was like I too. really wish I saw this in a theater because I'm just like any lull in the movie I check my know, phone for a moment and then I get mad at myself I'm I like know. well I have to, no I have to watch <laughs> I know. what's happening and uh with with Killers of the Flower Moon I think what happens is you when you're in a movie and you know it's three and a half hours you're just like okay I'm just gonna settle in I'm not gonna even like check the time because yeah. it's pointless yeah um but I did and I was surprised that the movie had only 15 minutes left. Yeah. I was like, huh, this went by extremely fast. Mm. So sometimes it's just like, it's just pacing. Yeah. Movies sometimes can feel better. I wanted to make a really fun movie. I yeah. wanted to make something that was super watchable. A yeah. lot of people watched it on the plane. I just wanted yeah. to make something that was like kinetic mm. and emotional, but also super weird. Yeah. And kind of like, it's both like a very sincere movie and yeah. it's also... To- a total joke at the same time. It's very tense too. It's about a dad that catfishes their son. So yeah. it's like I, I I almost feel like I'm making a joke even just by making it. Yeah. Where it's like, but it, but I'm not detached from it. I'm I'm all in. Mm-hmm. But it's like a ridiculous premise, you know. And yeah, it calls for like such a great, like the, the I mean I don't want to spoil any climactic scene, but there's a scene in a diner. Yeah. Like towards the end of the movie, that's just like everything's kind of crashing yeah, down yeah. and it's like, holy shit, I know, this it is turns crazy. into kind of a thriller. Yeah, at it that does. Point. I don't yeah. like this. You guys are connecting too much. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys seen Poor Things? Yes. No. Do you have to? <laughs> what's, the, what's the last so movie you good. watched, Jason? Uh, I just watched Kevin James' stand-up special. That's a stand-up That's a special. Movie. That's not a uh, the last movie. <laughs> let's see, the last movie we watched was... Um, <laughs> was it Barbie? No. Was it probably no. ki- probably killers? I guess I, we watched a movie. Oh, oh, we watched Dumb Money last night. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't That's seen about it GameStop yet. or whatever. Quite good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's good. Poor good thing. story. That Paul Dano is good. He's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Poor things was so. That's good. a great it's story. So good. So good. It's crazy. It's unreal. Yeah. It, yeah. It, 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 you need to see Poor Things, dude. It, Remember we saw Scorsese, uh, Scorsese oh, yeah. speak at. Uh, we went into a little screening of uh, Flower Moon, whatever, mm-hmm. and he he was there. He spoke. And it was awful because uh, they didn't turn the music off. Oh my god! So here's this so he was like speaking to a soundtrack. Almost. Yeah, he was speaking to basically like um, like ninety Dua rock. Lipa or something. Like Dua Whoa. Lipa was playing. No, in the it background. was like he went up there and he's like, "Okay, we made the film, and a lot of people." And then underneath him, you just hear staring at the blank page <laughs> before you open up, and everyone's like, "Turn!" And he's like, oh, "This that's... is about Native American genocide and how oh, awful yeah. it was." Open in up America. the dirty open up the window. window. That's the sound. And also, the crowd is like. Young influencers, yeah, who so don't. they're like vibing. Oh, the song. <laughs> like, they're who, vibing and they're the also recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. And That's they're such recording a good song. Who don't know who he is? So I think Brandon. No, they knew who he was. They had to have. You don't think so? I, mean, I feel like me, you, and Alex were the only ones that could, like cared. Oh, and then so uh, okay. So this is the great thing. So Scorsese's giving this like you know very uh, very like intelligent speech yeah, about yeah. what. Uh, that his movie is about yeah, and the music's playing and then all the influencers are recording him and then so he leaves he goes walks upstairs and then my friend Alex who I'm sitting right next to I feel like I can just we should show him what happened because I recorded sure. it okay so hold on see if I can find it so basically my friend Alex brings a copy of The Aviator which is a uh, yeah you know it's a Scorsese Howard film Howard Hughes Howard Hughes and so basically he brings this copy Two Scorsese. I'm going to show you right here. Oh, no. Okay, where is it? Yeah, okay. Uh, this is a streaming copy of the 
copy of uh, the Aviator. <laughs> I don't have my, uh, my marker. Yeah, but if you, if you want that, you can keep it. No, 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 you got to sign it for it. I saw the movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> I saw the first two. Episodes. Oh, this is so see. rough. Yeah. He's like, do my podcast? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, where's my Oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah. My favorite is he goes, oh, okay. Like, you sound psychotic if you bring a DVD out for someone to sign. Well, Alex is, I couldn't tell if Alex was like f***ing with him or if he was being genuine. No, I think he, he was kind of unsure as well. He's yeah. Like, is this a bit? Yeah. <laughs> Because he just because he didn't go. Do you want me to? Can you sign this? He's yeah. just like, here's a DVD. <laughs> like it, he was yeah. just going like, here's a thing. And yeah, and like, Scorsese had to be like, uh, I'll sign it. Do you for want me you? to? Do you want me to take it? Do yeah. You, like I already have one. Yeah. I don't know what to do with this. There's also an awkward movie. moment before that when he didn't have the marker. Yeah. Right. And so he he's... asked him first, and and uh, and he and he yeah that was really when awkward. you filmed he that. Did you know that he was going to do something nope. with the DVD? I was just recording because I was like, I want to get Scorsese like walking up just to say that I was in a room with him. What and did, then that what happened. What did your friend say? Like, did he say afterwards that he wanted him to sign it? Or that no, he, he just, signed it. I mean, no, he like, went outside. Was, he brought it so that he could get it no, signed. No, so, okay, so yeah, before the movie starts, uh, we're all just sitting there and we are, we're told that Scorsese is going to come and he's like, I brought this copy of The Aviator and I'm going to have Scorsese sign it. And we're just like, oh, that's so stupid. He's joking. Because we all laughed at it. He's like, no way. Right. And then he does it. Have and you ever got something signed? No. No, what I haven't. What do you think it is? Why do you think people like that so much? I, a cynical part of me is like, is it for like resale value? Hmm. Like that's the cynical part. But I also think it's just like, I don't know. It's it's a physical, it's like a yeah. connection. Yeah. It's like a physical yeah. thing that they wrote on the thing. And it, it almost brings you close. As opposed to like taking a photo, it feels kind of ephemeral. It's not, mm-hmm. you know, it's especially now it's in the cloud or whatever. But like, I don't know if a physical when, thing. When we were at Sundance, people would come up and have you sign like tons of pictures. Yeah. And then you're like, wait, this is, they're just like selling these. Yes. And then sometimes people would have you sign just a blank page. Yes. Mm. And then there was a moment where we kind of all did that. And we were like, that is the dumbest idea. Because they can just use your signature for anything. Yes. You know, for like bank you stuff. Know what you know what they're <laughs> like doing? They're banking on you becoming Leonardo DiCaprio. So yeah, when they just have stacks so when of, you do become Leonardo DiCaprio in five years, they have a stack of James Morrissey autographs. Yeah, I would ask them. They like, do that at the I would ask them like, "Who do you want me to make it out to?" Yes, and yes. Then they would invent a weird name. Yes, and now they just have all these random pictures signed to these obscure names. Tell us what Sundance is like. It's so fun. I mean, you're basic. It's all a lot of it is happening on this main street in Park City. It's yeah. very snowy and cold, and it's just a ton of filmmakers and people that love film all kind of congregating. And uh, is it the kind of thing where you can just kind of walk up to anybody and say hello? Is it is it like a it, that kind in, of mentality? In a lot of ways, yeah, yeah. yeah. That and must it's be nice. it's cool because you're all kind of discovering movies for the first time. Mm -hmm. And so you feel like it's kind of your movie. You know, each movie you see, you're like, Oh my God. Yeah. You're going in without any, um, real expectations. And so you're really, it feels like you're kind of connecting with the filmmakers and the team in a, in a Mm -hmm. different way than if it had just come out and already gotten, you know, a stamp of approval. You're, Mm -hmm. You're, it, it's very vulnerable for a filmmaker to share it with an audience. Yeah. So then you're like there with them for the first time and it, it's super exciting. What is it like yeah. for you when you sh- showed your movie there? What is it like for you in the audience? Yeah, just th- like so the first it? time I saw it, I, I was pretty much just focused on my performance in it. Just going like, <laughs> I hope I, I, I hope this is okay. Because <laughs> you don't know. You don't know how they edited it. Sure, I, yeah. I, the other movies that I had made, I had edited and, or worked with an editor. So I had, knew what was in there. Yeah. And the performance is so based on the editing. So you're kind of like, you know, how did they collaborate with the performance in the editing? Uh-huh. But then the last time I saw it, it was at this place called the Egyptian theater on main street. And I had, I had gotten over my self absorption and then was able to see it for the first time. Yeah. Really with an audience. I was sitting in the back of the theater and I was like, man, this movie is awesome. And yeah. was able to really appreciate what the filmmaker Greg Jordan had done. And so what happens uh, in the movie? Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, so, this man to break his NDA so bad. You just want to get him in trouble. It's going to be really fun for people to see it. I, I can't Yeah, and they'll wait. see it on Netflix. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah. Dang, man. Okay, this was fun. This was really fun, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever see um, Justin Thoreau's Hollywood Reporter? 
No. One, what he, he he parodies the Hollywood Reporter like oh, round tables. I, oh man, I've it's so it. funny. Um, all right, well, so the movie's coming out on Netflix. What's it called again? It's called It's What's Inside. It's What's Inside, mm. and then and then go watch your movie on Hulu. Um, I, I love, love you. My, I love my dad. I love my dad on Hulu. Yeah. Great movie. Patton Oswalt, yeah. Claudia Salewski, it's great. Claudia is so good in it too. Yeah, that's the yes. mom, right? Yeah. No, that's that's uh, oh, that's the, the fake girlfriend yep. that I have in it. Yep. Yeah. Dude, this is so cool. We've never had like uh, you know, movie indie indie movie star here. This is yeah, dude. It's really awesome. cool. I, I I'm really happy to talk to you guys. I really admire what you're doing. Like you know, Thanks, sticking to your craft, banging it out, writing every day, coming up with. It takes a lot. Yeah. Thanks. Man. When's the uh, when's the next one coming out? You think? Uh, I don't know. They haven't set a release date yet. <laughs> but you finished be... the script and everything. Oh, oh for 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 the your... one I'm working yeah, on. Yeah, the one you're uh, working on. Yeah, we're we're putting it together now. Hopefully, mm. uh, hopefully next year. I mean, I'm hope I'm hoping to shoot it this year, and then hopefully it's coming out next year. The horror. It's like a psychological thriller horror. Right on. It's it's ah. it's very weird. It's okay. a very weird movie. It's called. Uh, I, I'll, I'll I won't spoil it, but I, it's it's cool. I'm psyched about it. So not um, a comedy. It's funny, but it's, Bye. like, dark and twisted. Mm. Oh, I can't wait to see it. Yeah. All right, yeah, man. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for being here, dude. Yeah, thanks, guys. All right. Of course, man. This is awesome. Right. Bye, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.